Welcome to the Mistress of Change podcast for women devoted to living your highest life and purpose in the world. These conversations are about activating your personal power to ignite your unique genius, your quintessential style, and your potential for greatness, vitality, and abundance. Do stay tuned till the end to find the resources and the gifts we have for you and make sure you take action on the world-class advice. And now, enjoy the podcast. Welcome to this episode. She says almost choking <laughs> just on the first word. Welcome to this episode of um, Mistress of Change, brought to you by Preeminence Rising and, and the Preeminence Magazine. We are living in very disruptive times. It's probably what got right into my throat. Very disruptive times. So much shift going on in the world. And isn't it so wonderful and reassuring when we meet? earth angels and my guest today is an earth angel doing time on earth uplifting spirits everywhere and I am super 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 delighted and excited to bring her wisdom and beauty to you my gorgeous change makers and we're going to be talking about everything that you care about and how to simplify simplify your great missions in in these in these difficult times my guest is completely a different genre today she is a very very talented and successful mu musician singer songwriter composer she is also an author an inspirational spe speaker a spiritual spiritual teacher she's a polymath a multi-potentialite and she brings she brings her wisdom through all of her work she is a multi-platinum award winner in South Africa and I uh, was so delighted to to meet her and to, to be able to hear her music I am going we're going to be sharing her music with you as well so welcome my beautiful Nianelle oh thank you thank you so much that is an amazing introduction. <laughs> I feel blessed. Thank you. So honored to be here. Well, it's the, this is this is the stage. This is this is your stage, and um, my my audience know that I only bring them very very special interviews and and um, conversations that are going to move their life on. So, you know, what is it in your in your in your beautiful rich life that? brought you and, in, and inspired you not just to take the path of a singer and because many many musicians and, and singers and songwriters say that's enough but also to extend it into this transformational work that you're sharing with the world as as well could you just t t tell us what why that it's it's it, what your message is and why it's important for you to share your wisdom in in all of these different ways it is a big question, you know, <laughs> because I think it kind of captures the entire um, essence of who I am. In the beginning, I guess all of us just sort of want to establish ourselves, make, some name, make a name for ourselves, put, our, put ourselves out there and say, look at me, world, here I am, this is what I can bring. And eventually, when you get to a place or a platform where you think that you've reached almost um, your full potential, you've, you've um, achieved success, you've achieved fame, um, wealth, you have this perfect, beautiful family, everything is picture perfect, but inside you, you feel like something's missing. There, certainly there's more, you know, there, sh there should be more. And I think all of us reach this, this place in our lives Usually somewhere maybe in our forties, I think once you've once you've built up um, you know a certain amount of success and and then then you start thinking, but is this it? Is this it for me? Is this the end? <laughs> you know what what what's more? What else is there? And it's usually in 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 those stages of your life when a lot of things will start either crumbling, um, fall apart or you will 
because you have this longing for more, you will start discreating things that you that you've built up, and you're not necessarily consciously discreating it. You're subconsciously discreating it because your soul is longing for something more. So this is when your children might leave the home, or you you um, end relationships. Uh, or your business um, isn't thriving anymore because you're not passionate about it anymore, or it's still thriving, but you're not passionate about it anymore, and, and you want to do something more. And when we reach that place of our lives, it can be incredibly confusing and disheartening, and, and it can almost feel like everything is disintegrating, like just falling apart, but actually it's just all falling into place. This is the most amazing opportunity. And I believe that the world is currently offering us this opportunity. Like it's almost looking like everything is falling apart. And this brings us, like you said, onto a stage where we have an opportunity to say, now, what am I really bringing to the world? You know, what am I really here to say, uh, to do? And I think when you in that moment try and do something, try and say something, it even gets worse because we really didn't come here to do anything or say anything. We are here and that's it. You're here. How can you be the most magnificent being that you are being here and that takes a lot of courage to go within yourself to become still and to actually ask yourself what frame of mind what state of being must I be in to be of service to the planet you know and it's got nothing to do with acting and doing things and saying things it's about a stillness, an inner stillness that truly comes when you are at peace with who you are, when you are comfortable with who you are, when you finally reach that point when you know I am enough. And when I can access pure joy within myself, this is when I'm of the highest service to this planet. So all those things happen to me, the unraveling of relationships, you know, um, when we start attaching ourselves to all the roles we play, life is very, very challenging. It's very, very um, difficult to flow, to feel free when you are attached to your relationships, to your career, to your children. You know, I'm at a stage where my children are now turning 15 years old and their father is moving to Amsterdam. And the three, I have three beautiful little girls, triplets, and, and they have decided that they would like to take this opportunity to go with their father and his new wife and move to Amsterdam. And that will happen now next year, just before they turn 16 years old. Now, I thought I'm going to still have time with them till they're 18. We all know that the children leave, leave the house, you know. And I'm just really reminded every day of how we just really got to let go of all these attachments you know yes they've been beautiful gifts in my life I got to, to spend some amazing time with them but in truth they're not my children they travel through me and they come here and they are their own magnificent beings and the greatest gift that I can give my children is to say fly and and this will be at the age of 15 and I'm like Whew. You know, but I believe that when we believe in our children, when we believe in each other, when we believe in humanity, when we believe in Mother Earth, this is truly what we came to do here. And we cannot believe in anything if we do not believe in ourselves. This is uh, when we have absolute a lack of trust within ourselves or not believing in ourselves. This is when we want to go out there and fix everything you know, change everything on the outside. But I promise you, your children, they've got this. They can do this. All they need is for you to believe in, in them. I promise you, Mother Earth has got this. All she needs from us is to believe in her. I promise you, humanity has got this. They've got it. But we need to believe in them. And we cannot believe in humanity and in our earth and in our children if we do not believe in ourselves. And this is truly where it starts, you know. So which part of you is 
is doubting you, is not believing in you, is not allowing you to be all that you can be, is not allowing you to fly. Those are the parts we need to look at, you know. Those are the parts we need to embrace and absolutely love. And those are usually the parts that we're not too comfortable with. We don't want to show the world those parts, you know. We have to keep it all together. I believe our strength lies in our vulnerability. If we can let ourselves be vulnerable, cry when you're sad. Now, that is something I do on cue. <laughs> I can truly, you know, um, I'm not scared to cry. And I believe that every tear strengthens me. And we should be there for each other in that way. You know, yeah, a lot of things are very interesting right now in this world. Like you said, it's an interesting stage, but it is creating a stage for us to really, really shine. Gosh, there was so much in there that that um, is to so harmonious with my own work and 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 my and my own mission and my, and my own experience as, as well. And so I'd love to just come back on onto a couple of things, a few things there, which were which which are really really important. One is that this. Um, aspiration for material success is it's even though it's a shiny ob, a shiny object it you're, you're absolutely right it does it does not fulfill this so, this soul's longing the soul doesn't really doesn't really care about money it it, it, it doesn't it's it just it's just a it's just it's just a, it's just a big bonus it's a big bonus i love that you it's said a that. Big, <laughs> it's a big <laughs> Big, big, big bonus. So it does, it can get in the way. It really can get in the way. So, you know, what would, what would it look like if um, if humans, if humanity, if, if people, if, if the people that we, we're talking to could find this fulfillment early, earlier on in their life, instead of having to wait till to their, their 40s, their 50s, their 60s and beyond and have crises, um, what you know? What kind of a world we would live in if, if like our children and your gorgeous girls, who obviously are, are already tuned into that, is that because they know they've got to express express their their selves and their own freedom? Um, how how what how different our lives would be if we connected to that that um, that dialogue with our soul? Uh, and you know, it's it's actually very interesting that you mentioned that, but have you noticed how the young ones are becoming multimillionaires now already in high school? Um, I think wealth is something that we, we so chase um, and we are becoming more wealthier and more wealthier, younger and younger and younger. Um, but the greatest wealth is that inner wealth, is when you have the shiny objects but you really truly feel fulfilled and satisfied. You know, um, I think that is the, the world we wanna to strive to where, let's not say be poor, you know, um, we have to get into a wealth consciousness, but wealth consciousness is just not on the outside, it's something in the inside. And when it clicks in the inside, you will have it on the outside, okay? If it's just on the outside, the inside will feel like something's missing like there's a lack of satisfaction or fulfillment. But when it's already in the inside, wealth consciousness, it spills over to the outside. So it's not either or. Don't give up your wealth for soul fulfillment or soul satisfaction. They go hand in hand like everything does. Everything is balanced, you know. Um, and we have created a magnificent world of duality. And I love it. And I think when I was in my 20s, I, I, I wrote songs like As One. I was devastated with this duality that I was experiencing because all of us remember a, a oneness, you know, in our souls. And so I was like, what is the purpose of this duality? It's crazy. You know, so I, I wanted to make way of it. But as I grow older and more wiser, and the more wiser you grow, the more you know that you really don't know anything. So I think I'm at that place now, <laughs> finally, just, just after 50, where I realize I actually know nothing. And that's okay. <laughs> you know, I know a lot of stuff, but maybe I know nothing. And that's okay, too. I'm everything and I'm also nothing and that's okay. But the most important thing to remember is, is that duality serves a purpose, okay? 
Um, and when we resist anything, this is, this is when we lack freedom, when we lack in general. So as we arrive on this beautiful planet Earth, this enthusiastic soul that you are, the first thing that you need to um, learn to accept is your environment. So you have your body, you have your religions, you have your culture, you have everything that's in your environment, okay, is giving you an opportunity to learn freedom. Okay, because the goal is freedom. That's the one thing that we all desire so, so much here. And a lot of people think that money is the way to freedom. But here is what I am going to gently, just on a, on a quick little journey, if I may, take you to what really takes you to freedom. So when you arrive on this planet, your body is a, an environment and your culture and the country that you live in and the state and the, all of that. And the more you resist those things, your environment, the further away from freedom you remain. Now let's put freedom in the center. Let's, let's imagine we're looking at this big circle and freedom's in the center. So environment's right at the, at the outer edge of the circle. So you're far away from freedom if you are in resistance of your environment, your body, your country, the cultures around you, the religions. If we get a little bit closer and bring the people in there, and you have your mother and your father and your children and your lovers and your friends and your, you know, society, the more you resist them, the more you are in resistance of them. And that's how far away you are from freedom. Okay. Let's bring it a bit closer. Now it's just you. Okay. Anything and everything that you resist in you, the way you look, the way you think, whatever you resist takes you away from freedom. So as you can see, what we've truly come to learn here is to be in full acceptance. Now, for people, I've, I teach many classes and, and a lot of people have a great difficulty with the word acceptance. They almost feel like it's defeat. I'm giving up, you know, if I have to accept something, it's kind of, but acceptance is a beautiful, powerful word. I think we can bring allowance in there maybe, but for me, acceptance is the word that I understand and I have a knowing that there is so much more than this. And because I know that there's so much more than this, I allow it all to be as it is. And when you get to that place where you are in allowance of all that is just the way that it is without resisting it, only from that place can we change anything. You cannot change anything if you are still in resistance to it. Okay, now this is powerful line. Nothing can be changed if you are still resisting it. And now you're going to say, well, okay, so this is something I don't like. I don't want this. Right? And you're telling me I have to accept it. Okay. And the truth is, is as long as you are in resistance, that energy of resistance is what you are creating more of. You are creating more resistance, more resistance. So when I say acceptance, there's one virtue that is so needed that we have all come to acquire it and embodied here in this lifetime and this is trust a trust and a knowing that all is perfect as it is okay if this is all just a dream it is important that we as dreamers need to wake up in the dream and understand that we are creating the dream and that we need to look at this dream and realize that we are creating it perfectly for us in so many ways for our souls to expand and for whatever it is we, we came here to experience because after all life is all about just what do you want to feel what do you want to experience it is not about the achievements and the money and the stuff it's what do you want to feel when you think you have all this money what is the feeling that you thought it was going to give you it was going to give you what and i promise you we will all end up in the end saying freedom the freedom to be who i am the freedom to do what i want to do the freedom to believe what i want to believe the freedom to express the freedom to love just freedom and the way to freedom is acceptance complete and utter acceptance of what is right now and only when you can sort of uh, fall into that acceptance, allow what is to be, 
after that, the understanding will come of what is. And then you can create change. But change is not going to happen before you are not in full acceptance of what is. Mm. And I would even I would even take that one step further is to be able to see the blessings in every every single challenge, not just the not just the resistance like you don't want it to be, is um, actually to say what is what is the opportunity here? Exactly. Exactly. So you think uh, I have a, I have a little game that I like to play um, with people. So if anything pops up in my world that causes me a little uh, trigger, something's triggering me, whatever pops up in my world, like you say, it's an opportunity. What is this bringing um, to the stage? I love that word that you said. What is it bring? Bring it to the stage. What is this bring to the stage for me to observe, to look at, and to see what is it mirroring? What am I learning here? So the thing is, life becomes a lot easier when you stop focusing on everything around you, but look at what it's mirroring to you. So if someone comes into my reality or an experience or a situation or somebody, and it's really triggering me, my first question that I ask always, and this is a good exercise if, if, you, if you would like to learn this, but what am I feeling? What is this making me feel like? What is um, this person making me feel like? Okay, so are they making me feel like they don't respect me, disrespected, unappreciated, unacknowledged, um, whatever the feeling is, it's important to know the feeling because feelings are your map. This is so amazing because we've truly come here. We think that, you know, you said to me, wouldn't it be amazing if we already at a young age had this, um, this understanding but we do, we have our feelings. And what is the thing that we teach most people? Control your feelings, hide your feelings, suppress your feelings, please don't show feelings, makes us feel uncomfortable. I wanna invite you to really feel your feelings because your feelings are your roadmap. And there's two kinds of feelings, feelings that feels amazing, feelings that don't, okay? So when you're feeling great, you know you're en route, you're, you're doing good, you're in alignment with who you are and what you are a part of. And, 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 and if you're feeling bad, you know that you're off course, okay? You're forgetting who you are. You're forgetting your magnificence. You are basically, whenever you feel bad, you are buying into a lie about yourself or about something, okay? And you know that saying when they say, the truth hurts? <laughs> the thing is, the truth doesn't hurt. It hurts because you believe something about yourself that's not true. Listen carefully. When someone says something to you and it hurts, it only hurts because you believe that untruth about yourself. Not because it is the truth. The truth always feels very good. If I have to share with you your magnificence and your how amazing you are, you know, and I remind you of things that is beautiful about you and magnificent about you you're going to feel good right because that's the truth if i now bring anything else to the table that doesn't make you so feel so good it's because it's not the truth about you it is such a simple map that we cannot believe that it's true okay <laughs> that's why we don't believe in this map but you have this map so if you can listen to it Good feelings is the truth. Bad feelings is not the truth. Good feelings is I'm in alignment with who I am on my path. Bad feelings, I'm forgetting who I am off my path. So here comes a person. They trigger you. They bring bad feelings. Feelings of not feeling satisfied, not feeling for whatever they make you feel. Ask yourself, what are they making me feel? When you establish that, you know what you need from them. You know you need them to make you feel more respected or you need them to respect you or you need them to uh, validate you or acknowledge you or love you or accept you. And whatever you need from them is what you need to learn to give to yourself. And it's very simple like that. Whatever we need from other people is what we need to learn to give to ourselves. Also, because on some level, if they make you feel that way, it's not them making you feel that way. They're just putting on the light what you feel about yourself anyways. So how wonderful that they come onto your stage and put a spotlight on everything that you can heal and change within yourself so that you can shine brighter. 
you know. And then the, the second part of this exercise is besides what I need from you, what I need to learn to give to myself is what do I want to change about you? And that's usually the life lesson. If someone triggers me, I'll go and take a moment and I'll say, what would I like to change about this person? If I had a magic wand and I could change anything about this, now we know we can't change people, right? <laughs> we, we try. All of us, I'm sure, gave it a good go, but we can't change people. The important thing to remember here is, is this is a game, okay? So if you had a magic wand, you could change anything about this situation or this person, what would you change about it? And that is usually the very thing that you need to change about yourself. That is the life lesson. And life is so simple. The answers to all your very complicated questions and your complicated life is usually very, 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 very simple. Okay. And these two questions, what do I need? And what do I want to change? And then throw it back, you know, you can solve any problem within yourself, any relationship, it can become harmonious when you just look within, you know, so when you change, they either change, or they move away out of your reality. Um, but it all begins with you. And it's so simple. And we have this map, we have this roadmap, use it. Mm. there's so much richness and, and, and beauty and wisdom in there it's, um, I could listen to you all day would you agree Nia now that to get to this 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 stage this much uh, discern discernment um, of self-reflection that the part before that is self-love because I know I've heard you talk 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 about um, self love, but do we do we need to be to have our our self self love complete so that we're not making these projections and and seeing and seeing problems? I, I so love that you asked that because um, we are never done. We are never done. We are eternal beings. Okay, and we are eternally expanding and growing and becoming. So you are never done learning to love every facet of yourself or discovering facets of yourself. If you are looking for an end goal to begin something else, it's it's never advisable because you will either never start <laughs> or never live. The moment is now. In this moment, you are perfectly complete, perfectly whole and ready. Okay, and I would like to invite you not to put it on a scale of how much do I have to love myself or do I ever love myself completely? Now, the thing is, is in, in your awareness, you'll become aware every day. Oops, I forgot to love this part of me. Oh, here's a new part of me, you know. And isn't this amazing about every single human being on this planet? Everybody is introducing you to a new part of you that you've never met ever before. So you can never really completely love yourself because you haven't met all of you yet. Okay. So every new person that comes in will introduce you tum, 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 to a new part of you that you've really never met. And then you have the opportunity to learn to love that part. Now, some people bring out the best in us and some people bring out the worst in us, you know, but our job is to learn to love all of that. So this is an internal, eternal journey. So I want to um, invite you that, that, that you should be in, a, in awareness of all of this and, and, and flow with all of this without thinking that I first have to love myself completely before I will get to this awareness. Or, um, you know, it's an ongoing journey. And I think we make it so you know I've, I've before I can share a message with the world I need to overcome this challenge you know we we rise up monuments for people that suffered so that we can just um, admire their suffering okay if you have a good life and it's going well with you and you're happy 
you are the most perfect example. This is what we all strive for. You don't have to suffer to have a message or you don't have to go and finish all those courses before you can start teaching. You don't have to heal yourself before you become a healer. You don't have to have it all sorted out and, and figured out before you share it with the world. In fact, share it with the world while you're figuring it out, you know. <laughs> love the world while you're learning to love yourself. This is the moment. This is really it. And I think for me, the most um, amazing part about life is, is when I can just break it down in my morning meditation while I do my breath work. And my, uh, I, I believe that this is where we have to start every day. Connect with your body, connect with your mind and manage these two beautiful tools that you have. Remember, they're not who you are. They're just two beautiful tools that you have. And if you can manage your body and manage your mind, life becomes a lot easier. Okay, so manage these tools, become still in the morning and start breaking down all the roles you've attached to. The role of mother, a career woman, whatever it is that you do, the, the role of Okay, these are all the roles like uh, uh, daughter and, and sisters. And yes, we're, we're female uh, with this body, this face. But if you start breaking down all these things, there's three roles we play here as well. Perpetrator, victim and savior. Okay. And these are all just roles. The challenging part starts when you attach and define your worth and your value by the roles that you are playing. Understand that all these roles are coming to teach you how to, to, to expand and to learn lessons, the role of perpetrator. And you're going to be a perpetrator sometimes. <laughs> it doesn't matter how amazing you are, you're going to be someone's perpetrator. Is teaching us self-control self-love self-acceptance and forgiveness specifically self-forgiveness so whenever you've been someone's perpetrator that's the lesson the lesson for victims is to stop blaming other per people take responsibility for your creation for your life you are creating this reality and um and step into your power okay know that you are creating take responsibility for it and understand what you have learned up to now as equipped you to create a better future finally the saviors now i love the saviors because strong women often are saviors you know and they become saviors because they felt very unsafe during their lives they felt unsafe in their home or in their marriage or somewhere in their life they felt unsafe and because they felt unsafe they started to control every aspect of everything they they think if i can if I can own this, if I can control this, then I can make sure that I am safe. So saviors lack trust. Saviors need to learn to trust that they are not alone and they're not having to do everything on their own. And it's not just up to them. You know, Every savior is secretly waiting for a savior to come and save them. And the thing is, no one's coming. You have to save yourself. And the only way to save yourself is to go within and remember who you are and what you are a part of, okay? It feels incredibly alone when there is this feeling of disconnection with the source of all life that is who you are and what you are a part of. It is within you. And for us, we're never disconnected. We just feel disconnected. So... That's why I highly recommend meditation every single day to come to a place where you just take a moment to, to feel your connection again with that all that is energy that flows through you and that is you. I like to call it um, the dreamer that is dreaming you. And, um, and then you are dreaming your dreams, you know. And what an amazing full circle when you start dreaming about the dreamer that's dreaming you. Um, you know, in breath, it's, it's also beautifully described as there's conscious breathing and then there's awareness breathing. So when you take a breath consciously, you're doing the breath. So just take a nice deep breath in with me. <sighs> we are breathing consciously. Then there's another kind of breathing that is awareness breathing. This is not you consciously doing the breath, but you are witnessing and observing yourself being breathed by the all that is energy. And so if you can take some time in the morning 
do some conscious breathing until you feel like okay, I've got a lot of oxygen in my body now and then become still and observe and witness how something much, much bigger than you is breathing you. I mean, what an incredible feeling to know that there's this energy breathing you, that there's this dreamer dreaming you, and that that you are never alone and that you are always supported and that this energy's main intention and purpose is to love you and to serve you and to gift you and to um and all you have to do is like yes thank you gift me you know breathing for me is a wonderful teacher because as we breathe in this is when we receive and as we exhale this is us giving now, don't breathe in again and see how long you last. Eventually, you're going to be blue in the face. <laughs> it's all about balance. We have to receive, breathe in, in order to give. We have to have this balance. All right. And most saviors need to learn how to receive. Okay. And so for me, the lessons for a savior is save yourself by allowing yourself to receive. And the only way you're going to allow yourself to receive is when you're learning to trust that it's safe for you to receive, that it's possible for you to receive. And to remember that there is this all that is energy always, eternally and unconditionally flowing for you. It's, you know, when you think about it, it's just I so badly want to give to you. Please let me give to you, you know. And then saviors will go like, yes, but when I do ask for help, no one helps me. It is because you have this very strong subconscious mind creating on your behalf saying, please do not give to this person. If you give to this person, it will prove to them that they are weak. If you give to this person, okay, you put them at risk. Because now they're going to have to either justify why they must receive from you or do they, can they trust you giving to them? You're probably going to want it back. Do you understand? Oh, they're going to owe you. All these things are playing in the background. Okay. And these are the voices that we have to become aware of. This subconscious mind is a powerful creator. But you can discreate all of this the minute you become aware of it. And life has a beautiful way of making us aware of things, you know. So awareness is the beginning of change. Once you're aware of something, you can change it, you know. So my message usually to the world is, I just think we work too hard. I think we try too hard. We want to do too much stuff. We've really forgotten how to live and how to have fun. And really, it's all about that. I understand that you are a powerful woman and that you have within you much um, abilities and attributes that can assist the world. But if you're not in a space of joy, you're truly not helping anybody. If your life isn't feeling fulfilled and satisfied, you're not helping anybody because you are in truth the only one. And if we can start with you, if you can be joyous, if you can be happy, you are raising the vibration of millions. That is how magnificent you are. Amen to that. <laughs> Beautiful. And isn't it magical how when we are coming from that state, I love, love the, way that, that, um, the way that you talk about us, as, awa as awakened dreamers, watching watching something dreaming through through us, and and then witnessing how the world orchestrates that, um, even with these bits that surprise us, like our three 15 year old daughters wanting to <laughs> wanting to <laughs> the orchestration. The orchestration is is so perfect all the time if we you you know you 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 had something that a lot of a lot of women would find so difficult a lot of people would just find would so hard but because you you're coming from this um this gorgeous tapestry and this relationship 
with with consciousness it, itself it is you it's grace filled when you when you when you live from this place and you're living and enjoying all of this phys this physical stuff that we talked about earlier but this um adventure that our, that our that our soul is is having um mm -hmm. with it within and, and without so it's it's so magical to see the way that the universe it never ceases to enchant me every <laughs> single day yes. including including the synchronicities that happen that bring me to have you have you come through on my messenger um 10 days ago and and then connect and for, for your wisdom to come through to the people that need to hear it right now at the perfect moment in the perfect context is it's it's all we have to do is is just be an ask, ask just ask and the universe will bring it to you keep asking we have stopped asking things because you know we're so used to not getting what we want that we just stop we stop asking we stop feeling we stop wanting things but i want to encourage people to ask again ask and it'll come and then remember it's the stuff that you're holding on to the resistance to let go of it that you can't make space for the new things to come in now I'm not telling you that I've got this waxed and that you know that I'm I'm getting that I'm doing it perfectly, but at least I know what I need to do to get to that place of grace. I know that I have to just sit down, release the resistance, trust, and I know that there's there's something bigger, there's something more. You know, this morning I read a quote, I actually put it on my Facebook. It says that the trees are noticing the leaves are falling because we're entering winter year um, in South Africa and, and, the tree, and the trees are losing their leaves and yet they don't worry. They don't worry. And I think, you know, uh, we're at a, I'm not sure how old you are or most of your listeners, but I'm turning 51 this year and I'm at a, a stage in my life where I'm noticing leaves falling, things are changing uh, a lot of things that I thought was going to be there forever and I think this is one of the greatest lessons when we are in our 50s or 40s is that things fall away children leave the home you might end relationships but businesses change your career changes and through all of this change if you were holding tight to all of those things and let that define you it's going to be very challenging for you that that stage of your life is going to be very challenging but if you can learn to just go okay if I let this go you know why the trees don't worry and stress that the leaves are falling it's because they know what's coming they know that new leaves are coming something more beautiful something different something new nothing's ever lost and I think a lot of us feel that I'm losing my children, I'm losing my country, I'm losing my wealth, I'm losing my success, I'm losing my, my youth, my, my health. You can never lose anything. It's impossible because you are an eternal being and everything is eternal. Everything just transforms and changes shape and changes, uh, it just changes, okay? You, it's not gone. It's impossible for it to be gone. And you don't get to experience the new form it takes if you hold on to the old, okay? And so I just have to remind myself the whole time because the one thing that I'm thinking is, oh, I so love snuggling them. I love putting my face in their necks and smelling it and smelling it. And it's, it's like, I want to hold on to them. You know, my heart's going, my human heart's going, ah, oh, I'm going to miss my babies. I'm going to miss my babies. My soul's saying, there's going to be a new dimension to your relationship. Okay, it's going to transform and you have to allow this. And if you fight this, if you hold on to what is, I can tell them you're not allowed to go. I can. But then they end up resenting me. And, you know, we have to understand that what we give people is what we feel. 
you can help the entire world, but if you resent doing it, you're giving people your resentment. You can stay in a relationship because you feel guilty, but what you're really giving that relationship is your guilt, okay? And I think when we start understand, understanding that we give feelings rather than actions and the things we do, I, I want to give my kids my faith. And I know that if I believe in them, that's all that they need. And then as there's a part of me that remember when I was 15, 16, I wanted to go and explore the world. And my mom didn't matter to me that much because, you know, I'm my own person and I'm discovering myself, you know. And so for me, I realized that there's a whole new world waiting for me. I'm going to be free again. I'm going to have a, a, a I can be, be like when I was in my 20s, I can go and do anything, you know. So anything in life that changes like that comes with a little bit of grief because you got to let go of that. And that's not an easy process. But when you allow yourself, and like I said, just breathe through it. So when you do your breathing techniques in the morning and the emotions well up, you know, just breathe through it. Just breathe through it. And you'll feel it, it gets easier and easier to let go. And it's important to acknowledge your feelings. It's important to feel them when they well up, when you want to cry, cry, be with it. Don't try and analyze it or dissect it or heal it or, you know, understand it even. If you're feeling something, especially in your 50s, <laughs> just feel it, just feel it, you know. And sometimes by just being with that feeling instead of resisting it and this is the same thing as i told you the resistance from the environment and other people in you even your feelings they just want to be felt they just want you to feel them the minute you allow yourself to feel that feeling it'll come and go it'll come and go not every feeling needs to be understood um sometimes they just want to be felt and so feel your feelings and 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 truthfully the 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 thing i'm trying to bring across here is is, is it's the resistance that makes us suffer okay the resistance to everything and freedom truly lies in allowance and acceptance and just trusting that everything will be okay everything is okay it's always been okay you are an eternal being unconditionally taken care of you're going to be okay so when we look at this world and what's happening in our world today it's going to be okay it's actually for me when i look at the world when all of this started i was so excited i was like oh my word i'm living in a movie i chose the best time to come this is amazing <laughs> the more you resist something the worse it gets for you the more you allow it and you sit back and you watch the movie and you're just observing rather than getting in there and you know playing a part in it and, and getting all just observe what is it reflecting what is it bringing up for you and what a great opportunity uh, we've had in the last couple of years just to go within and truly connect with who we are and what we are a part of you know a lot of people come to my courses and say to me so so who am I okay and and, and what is my life purpose why am I here you see there's certain questions that you can ask in life that will always lead to more questions more questions more questions more questions it's important that you must learn to ask the right question. So I want to invite you to, instead of asking, who am I? Ask, who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? If you are source energy expressing itself in this magnificent, beautiful body as a human being, how would you like to express source energy on this plane of existence? That is the right question because it leads to an answer. Who do you want to be? And just go out and be that. Until you don't want to be that anymore, then you be something else. <laughs> you get to decide. You get to decide how you want to express your magnificence here. And why are you here? <sighs> 
again, more questions, more questions, more questions. The question that will lead to an answer is, what do you want to experience here? What would you like to feel here? And then I'm going to tell you, that is why you're here. Go out and experience it, feel it, create it. We are here to experience feelings. And in this moment, I'm just so grateful that I have an opportunity to share. And it feels so good. It feels so good to share with people, to just be with people and to say, wow, you know, I'm real. I feel, I feel a lot. I feel all the time. I feel so many feelings at stages that I'm amazed. Can I feel this much joy and fear at the same time? Is it even possible? I'm not actually sure it's possible to feel all these feelings at the same time. And then I embrace myself and go, you're so adorable. Look at you, just a bundle of feelings. I love you. Feel. We came here to feel. And your feelings is your map. And it will show you when you're on course or when you're off course. And ultimately, we came here to have some fun. We came here to just enjoy the magnificence of this beautiful planet that we all together, all of us, created this. Because we dreamed it into reality. Well, my ladies listening, I did promise you an earth angel. I'm very emotional myself. Well, don't let it in. <laughs> Keep it out, let it go. <laughs> Yeah, just, uh, it, it, <laughs> it's simple, just like, it's simple. It, we complicate it so much and, and, it, and it is simple. I, I, and I, can you feel how hard it feels to hold it in? Yeah. If you're emotional, it feels so hard. It's not easy to control the emotions. It's a lot easier to just, just let it out, you know? And I really feel that we should just let it out. We should just feel it. Yeah, and you're so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And so are you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I am so I am so thrilled to be having this conversation and to uh, I hear um, on behalf of my of my audience. So, so I'm <laughs> I'm actually experiencing what they're going to experience when they when they listen to this and there's so much so much I'm sure it's this is going to be one to listen to again and again and again and take little bits so and um I don't even want this to be the last time either Nia Nell oh, um, I'd love to visit with you again yes please, please, you're just magnificent. We, we are obviously uh on on a on a beautiful a beautiful ba bandwidth doing doing the same great work and you can be sure that I am going to, going to be sharing where people can find out more about your work, how to work with you, your music, um, get in touch with your beautiful soul and, and continue this, this journey together. So um, right now, I am, I'm just going to say that you are an absolute blessing for the world. And I, I feel really blessed to, to have you to share with, with, with my, my change makers. So thank you so much for being available today and sharing so vulnerably and so, so sparklingly and so beautifully. Thank you. Thank you. I, I feel really, really blessed to um, share this time with you and to be able to connect with your beautiful soul. And, and I wanna thank you for, for, for sharing this with, with, with your people and with everybody. And, in deep gratitude for you.